Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. What do we have, Crystal? Indeed we do. Um, lots of stuff to get to. Some incredible stories in the news. We're going to talk about Biden's big trip. We're going to talk about uh, new efforts in the domestic war on terror. Hillary Clinton makes a big endorsement, both of our monologues. We're going to have our first, actually our second in-studio guest, because we had Kyle in here. That's right. Pre-taped that for Monday. We've got Jeff Stein in today. All kinds of stuff going on economically. Um, and we both just got back from Texas. Incredible week. It was an amazing week. Um, amazing. Really grateful to Joe for having us on and also for letting us interview him. That's right. Which he does very, very rarely. Very rarely. So I believe we're the cool. second, maybe the second, um, at least the ones to do it in his studio. Shout out, I guess, to Lex Friedman for even giving me the idea in order to ask him. <laughs> we wouldn't have had the to courage it, so to ask. I would never have had the courage that. to ask. So thank you, Lex, for blazing the trail for all of us. Also, you might notice that beautiful new graphic oh, that's right. down there at the bottom. It was inspired by a Redditor. His name is Sean Barley. And his Twitter name, this is what I promised him in exchange for being able to use this graphic, is at S-O-S-B, in case anybody ever wants to contact him. Very talented designer. He happens to mock this up. We sent it over to our designer, and he created this. So we don't let anybody say that we do not listen to you, and especially to our premium subscribers who complained about it a lot, and we did it. So there we go. Yes, But let's indeed. start off with a very some very important news about the president of the United States going abroad. Let's go ahead and see uh, how the how he handled himself with the press corps when he was asked, not even, frankly, that much of a challenging question, but like a very slightly one. Let's take a listen. Why are you so confident he'll change his behavior, Mr. President? Yeah, I'm not confident he'll change his behavior. What the hell, what do you do all the time? So when did I say I was confident? You I said, said in the next six months I said, you'll be able to what I said was, let's get it straight. I said what will change their behavior is that the rest of the world reacts to them and it diminishes their standing in the world. I'm not confident of anything. I'm just stating the fact. But given his past behavior has not changed, and in that press conference after sitting down with you for several hours, he denied any involvement in cyber attacks, he downplayed human rights abuses, he even refused to say Alexei Navalny's name. So how does that account to a constructive meeting as President, President Putin? President? You don't understand that you're in the wrong business. It's a summit with China. Yeah. 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 Wow, Crystal, having a little bit of a fit there, huh? I don't even know what to call that. It's like a cranky old man moment, really. It's, it's a very uh, very high get-off-my-lawn vibe. High Clint <laughs> Eastwood energy from that movie. It, no, you're absolutely right. But I think that what the stunning part of it is not the freak out. I mean, look, Trump used to do that stuff all the time. It's that the press... I mean, was very mildly critical, but then Biden actually walked up apparently afterwards and he was like, I'm so sorry. So he apologized mm. for it. And that is what caused spawn, like it spawned some of the most North Korea level fawning that we have yet seen. Glenn Greenwald, of course, is the one who flagged a lot of these. So let's go ahead and put Natasha Bertrand's tweet up there on the screen. Biden apologizes. I owe my last questioner an apology. I shouldn't have been such a wise guy with the last answer he gave, but it wasn't really that. It was this one. Let's put this up there on the screen. Jake Sherman um, and the little tweet that he has there. He says, just now to reporters, you are the brightest people in the country. And as Jake says, Trump didn't say that. And you're right. You know what? In some cases, that would have been fake news, Jake. And I, I can go on forever. Jeff Zeleny. Let's put this one up there. It's my particular favorite from CNN. Joe Biden carried himself with a seasoned air of confidence that new presidents seldom possess. The Biden doctrine will be tested in the months ahead as the relationship he's crafting with Putin and other leaders develops. There, I, I mean, we have one more, which I'll, I'll save for you uh, to be able to show everybody. <laughs> All of these just show Kim Jong-un, North Korea, you know, talking head woman coverage of the president abroad. The truth is, that was embarrassing. That was like an, a crazy freak out there at CNN's Caitlin Collins, who actually was asking a perfectly legitimate oh, question. question. And just in general, you can see that now that things are a little bit more open, and even though he is probably the least, I think the most restricted access person to the press in pre the modern presidency in a long time. Remember, he took longer than any modern president, I think in 100 years, in order to hold a press conference. He does not do well under pressure. And the only thing that protects him are the press themselves who complain. And remember, I used to be a White House correspondent. I hear from these people. They complain to me endlessly that they don't have the access that they mm -hmm. used to under Obama. Oh, the White House. 
Biden apparently made him wait three hours and he took a pre-selected group of questions from like the top, you know, the five networks or whatever. And Trump used to go and even Obama and then they would take questions from a lot of people. He does not do any of that. And yet they still can't stop themselves. They have to bow down before the dear leader. It's embarrassing. So it, there's a lot to say about this. First about the actual moment. I just want to say I'm not like outraged that no, he yes. like it was crabby right. and snapped at Caitlin Collins. Yeah. But you do recall back on the campaign trail when he was running for the Democratic primary in particular before COVID, because once COVID happened, yep. like basically right. normal campaign events were over, you know, then the basement strategy was implemented very effectively. When he was actually out doing campaign events, remember his staff was leaking to the press mm -hmm. that like, we can't schedule him for stuff late in the day. He starts to like, be less kind of yep. on the ball. Yeah, he would only do like one event a day in mm -hmm. Iowa. Yeah. There were a number of incidents where he got super crabby with voters. Murray challenged that look dude fat. to like a push-up contest. Yeah, look fat. Famous. And then there was the, uh, what was it, lying dog face lying pony, dog soldier. pony soldier. Remember that? Famous, <laughs> so, yeah. Joe Biden having these crabby old man moments, very typical for him, very typical, frankly, for a man his age. He's been traveling overseas. That's very exhausting. I just got back from Texas last night at 4.30 a.m. I can relate if I have a moment <laughs> like that. I hope you will go easy on me. Um, granted, I'm not president of the United yeah. States. Uh, so I just want to say that. But I got to say, put, even let's put Trump aside. Imagine Bernie Sanders had a moment like this. Oh, yeah, you're dead. Berating, right? right. right? A right. female report, a young right. female oh, reporter. Yeah, right. Oh, forget about it. The takes would be endless about how this shows his misogyny. He's such uh -huh. a sexist, and he's so mean, and he's so angry. He's such a crabby old man. All of that stuff. So double, double standard, it's worth pointing out. Now, I will say there was a, this sort of like competing battle online between establishment journos. That's right. Some who were like, this was kind of gross and kind of mm -hmm. Trumpy. I don't want to say it was as bad as some of the things Trump did, but it was kind of like a Trumpian feel to it. And right. so some people are just trying to judge it on its merits. And others were like Jake Sherman. Well, at least it was a little better oh, than Trump. It was a little better. So are we going to continue to grade this guy on a curve? Yes. I also think it's hilarious. Biden, even when he apologizes, this is another one of the embarrassed. Biden oh. looked Putin in the eye. Putin immediately looked away. This was the other thing. With he has to add that little uh, thing at the end there. This was the other thing about the Biden-Putin summit, which is that all of the, like, like, reading into the theatrics of who looked at who and who squeezed oh. the hand harder and who stared who in the... I mean, it's so silly. It's just yeah. so incredibly silly, this type of reporting. But the other thing I want to say is, even when Biden was apologizing to Caitlin Collins and he said, like, you guys never ask a positive question... We looked at the numbers and how Biden is covered versus every other president. To think that you're getting unfair coverage right. by the press for Joe Biden, who's gotten like the fluffiest coverage ever in this entire from the launch of his presidential campaign until now to be complaining about the press being too hard on him is just, you know, it's just silly. That's it just a, doesn't. It really belies the facts. And again, this isn't a subjective judgment. We've looked at. The tenor of the coverage for Biden versus pe president's past, forget about even Trump, mm -hmm. but Obama and Clinton before him, and the amount of negative coverage is less than all of those. Excellent point. And the, we covered that, I think, while that story while we were down in Austin, that Pew Research report, which showed, what did it show? That Biden has the least negative press coverage of any modern president. Least negative. Just think about that. I think it's completely crazy. Yeah. Least negative press coverage. Not necessarily positive, but it's negative space. And as we said, what they choose not to show you is far more important than what they actually do choose to show you. And in this case, what actually was shown from the press conference, Crystal? Uh, did anybody hear anything about a policy at all? You know, in a way, I almost preferred the coverage of the Trump-Putin summits, Helsinki and all that crap aside, mm -hmm. because reporters faked cared about things like the Nord Stream 2 pipeline mm. or the Ukraine or Ukraine, like a settlement or whatever, and or uh, start this new START treaty. All that stuff, and which I think are all very important. And on that, they would try to frame it again as like Trump selling out America. But here is nothing, absolutely nothing, in terms of what what came out of that. Uh, what was it? Putin was asked whether he respected Biden, and he was like, "Yeah, oh yeah." H how do you think they would have reacted if he said that about Trump? And apparently, Biden looked away from his eyes. Okay, thank you, the, thank well, you, American press. I have to say, I I disagree a little bit that yeah. they covered Trump better on Russia at all because. 
The press, in my opinion, has gotten everything about the like Russia policy dynamic and the reality of who's being more or less hawkish and whether it's even a good thing to oh, be more or I less Oh, I didn't say hawkish. it was good. I yeah. was saying on a policy substance, there were at least, I, some of them found out what New Start was for the first they, time. But they've gotten, yeah. so first of all, the overwhelming consensus among the press is being hawkish towards Russia is good, mm, right? Right, that's right? That's their decision. That's They've right. just blanket decided that that's the, the right posture towards Russia, which, of course, I completely disagree with. Mm. So they're wrong to start with about their framing that we should all just decide that being aggressive and adversarial towards Russia is the right thing for us and for the world. So they've made that decision, which I think is wrong. But then they only look, with both Trump and now with Biden, at these sort of like posturing signals. So Trump in the Helsinki summit, which was like, granted, it really was embarrassing. weird, right. and embarrassing and fawning right. and all of those things. But they only look at his sort of obsequious words towards Putin, while actually his actions, and again, I disagree with this, mm. his actions in Syria, his actions with regard to the Nord Stream 2 pipeline were more hawkish towards right. Russia. So they only look at the surface level with him. And now they're doing the same thing with Biden. With Biden, they want to paint the picture of, like, he's being really tough and aggressive. So they reach for things like, you know, he stared Putin in his eyes and Putin looked away. Meanwhile, Biden has actually given Putin, had a, a softer stance. Right. And again, I, I agree with that. I actually think Biden on the policy, which is the thing that actually matters, has been far better than Trump on Nord Stream 2. On, uh, so on actually our orientation towards Russia, he has been less hawkish, which I agree with. But the press gets it all mixed up on what we should be doing and on which president did what. And so it just ends up incredibly silly with these like theatrical diagnoses of who was the tough guy and who stared who down and who had the harder handshake or whatever. Right. And when you do focus on policy, uh, what do we actually get whenever he does open his mouth down in uh, down whatever he was after the Putin conference talking about how America conducts itself on the world? Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right.